Now, they say you should never talk about sex, religion, politics and money at the dinner table. And it's because money can be a bit uncomfortable to talk about at the best of times, let alone when a loved one has just died. Now, when it comes to inheritance, do you know what will happen in your family? You don't need to tell me, but you need to tell each other. Because the concern is that if you don't talk about it and you wait until the person is gone, there can be family dramas. Uh, The person that's passed mightn't have their wishes fulfilled. It can become quite messy if you don't have the conversation. Now, the silly thing is about all of this is that new research commissioned by financial commentator and best-selling money author Vanessa Stoikov shows that the vast majority of us actually want to talk about inheritance with our family. Vanessa joins me. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Vanessa, it's something that 74% of Aussies want to talk about, inheritance. Why, Why aren't we having these conversations? What's the main reasons that you've found that uh, we are avoiding this conversation? Mm, Well, uh, the research actually said uh, even though 70 over 70% want to, more, only more than half haven't, and the main reason is they don't know how. And I guess, you know, don't talk about politics, religion and money at the table. <laughs> Probably bringing up death isn't all that fun either. So, you know, the biggest thing about inheritance is facing mortality, and a lot of people, you know, it's a very emotional subject. So, you know, the conversations will get left unsaid, and, and then it gets too far down the track, and a lot of the time it causes a lot of problems for families. Mm. It can be a very awkward conversation depending on what role you play in it. I'm thinking if you're uh, the person, you know, if if I was to bring it up, it seems like I'm just waiting, you know, I'm just waiting for that person to pass so that I can finally get my hands on whatever it may be. It can be a bit uncomfortable depending on who brings that conversation up. Is there someone that you think should start the conversation? So in the research, it overwhelmingly showed that everyone thinks the person leaving the money should be the one to bring it up. And, you know, over the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to see three and a half trillion dollars handed over from baby boomers to the next generation. It's the wow. biggest wealth transfer we've seen in our history. And, and baby boomers have done extremely well. They've created more wealth than any other generation in our history. So, you know, if you look at the amount of money being handed over, it's life-changing money. Mm. And if people don't have the conversation, then, you know, one, you don't get to leave the legacy you want, I guess. And it's it's lovely to be able to talk about how you'd love to leave a legacy and what you stood for and what you'd like to leave for your family. But also, I mean, real estate prices mean that people are sitting on multi-million dollar inheritances simply because they own a house. Mm. Um, and that's that sort of money. It is great to get everyone together. I suggest set an agenda, you know. It could be quite a fun meeting where you have a list of things you'd like to say um, and talk to everyone about it. And, look, that might be one conversation. It might take months. It might take years for everyone, mm. you know. But at the same time, the, the earlier you bring it up, even things like where what, what you'd like to happen, um, th- there's a huge aged care crisis in the country because, you know, <laughs> there's a shortage of staff. But... The earlier you think about what you'd like to do with your home or where you'd like to go and have control of that, the easier it is for your family as well. Absolutely. You mentioned having a meeting. Do you think, uh, is that the best way to have this conversation, is to have everyone sit down together in a formal sort of way? I think so. I mean, there's always going to be one-on-one side conversations. I mean, that's what family is. You know, you talk to people alone. But until you get everyone together, and I suggest writing an agenda, like where you ask people, okay, I'm going to speak and please don't interrupt until I'm finished and you get through the items on your agenda because it can be emotional. Anything can happen in family environments. But if everyone's together, you can sort it out together. Absolutely. Uh, Should you give everyone the heads up? Is it something, uh, even that though can seem a bit confronting. I think um, 
in a rural setting, we often talk about uh, succession planning. And I know for some families it can be quite confronting if the younger generation say, we're coming on this date and we'd like to talk about this topic. But does it need? Does everyone need the heads up so that you're not sort of sitting there over Sunday brunch and all of a sudden grandma pops up and says, when I die? <laughs> yeah, look, and, and that's no one wants to think of people you love dying too. So maybe the heads up on I'd like to talk about my legacy or the things that you, you you can put. I guess it can be seen as positive or negative, and it really is the way you manage it. But it's I also think there's a huge thing to be said for warm hands, and so many people now are giving with warm hands, meaning while well, you're still there. Um, talking about it and maybe even seeing the effects of things you've been able to do for your family. It's it's a lovely thing. Absolutely. I know uh, as part of your research and talking to people, you sort of came up with the five, you know, top tips on how to have this conversation around inheritance, uh, which we've talked about, you know, schedule that meeting, uh, let everyone know what's coming, uh, have an agenda. But the fifth tip is uh, to set up another meeting. Why do you think it's important that this isn't just a one-off conversation? I think because you need to give people time to absorb. I mean, some of the time there'll be nothing all that controversial you have to say, and but a lot of the time you've got to give people time to, to go away and think about it and ask questions and clarify and all those things. So setting up another meeting is a good way to make sure that the message has gotten through and, and, and give some time between it. You know, no one... Um, information tends to absorb over time and you tend to be, uh, you know, think more logically when you've got time to, to grapple with things. So, you know, leave a month between it or so at least so that people have time from the fallout to talk. Um, and the other thing is that there's a lot of the time we found that some siblings are getting more than others and that's because some have done better financially than others so parents want to give it to the one that really needs it and sometimes that causes a lot of angst too um, simply because other siblings may or may not agree with that theory. Mm. In your research, did you come across families that are really open and honest about money? It's not an awkward conversation. You know, the F word is appropriate. A finance, of course. I know it's a. you use the F word a lot. You're passionate about the F word being finance. Do those families Thanks for do... clarifying that one. <laughs> I loved that uh, on your website that, uh, yeah, you're a big fan. Let's all use the F word more often, particularly with our family. Finance, thank you, everybody. Uh, You know, have you found those families that are open and honest, that aren't afraid to have these conversations, that when it comes to that extremely difficult time when they're grieving, that they can handle things better and the person's wishes are fulfilled? Yeah, we have lots. And we've got lots of great examples. Um, so some were saying they'd stuck little stickers on things to say, this is mine, this is yours, colour-coded stickers, and that they had quite a lot of fun doing it while their mother was still there. Um, she got to say, you're going to get that. And um, so obviously the stickers stood, and when, when she passed on, they all got the things they wanted or that they would remember her by. But I think a lot of people that on the land, actually, talking about succession tend to do this well because they're talking about who's looking after the land next. So... Mm. You know, we've had a lot of examples of people living on the land. They know who's getting the farm or who's carrying on. And, you know, that's pretty open. I mean, in our own family, we have pretty open discussions about money. My father died four years ago now, but um, oh, they'd sorry. always said, you know, yeah, thank you. Um, but he reached a good old age of 83, so he'd had a very big life. Um, and he'd always said, your kids get the three of you, we'll get everything. But mum's still around, obviously, so it mm. goes to her and then then on from from there but there was he's european he was serbian and um there was they talk about money a lot and i went there with dad and i'm like wow this is kind of a real discussion here mm. and i think that influence was helpful when us growing up that it was never a secret it was never a something that you wouldn't speak about but i do know lots of people where money was never spoken about and mm. it would be impolite rude to speak about money absolutely Thank you so much for your time this morning. It's a tricky topic uh, talking about inheritance and talking about finance more generally, particularly with your family. Uh, So I love the tips and the fact that your research is showing that these are conversations we want to have 
And uh, if, you know, someone can take the lead, preferably, you know, the person that uh, is of age or, or knows that, um, unfortunately, their life is maybe coming to an end, that it puts ease in the family's mind. So thank you so mm. much for, for sharing your tips and uh, research with us this morning, Vanessa. Oh, I'm very happy to do it. And if anyone wants to know more on my website, there's a free guide to inheritance. Like you can just download it and have a look. It has some more questions you can ask and be asked. So, yeah, that's on my website under free things. So people can have a look there. But thanks for having me. It's oh. a good conversation to have first thing Saturday morning, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's sitting down with their cup of tea. They might be seeing the family tomorrow for lunch. Something yeah, to think about. Things now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so good luck to you all. Thank you so much, Vanessa. It's uh, been a lot. pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Vanessa Stoikov, who is, of course, a financial commentator and a best-selling money author. And I love that free little uh, guide that Vanessa's talking about on her website. If you're struggling on how to get started, that might be a good place to go. And maybe that will prompt things. An important conversation about inheritance and what will happen.